Okay, one, two, three. What's up, guys? I'm John. And I'm Annalisa. And to stop, come on. Bean. What's up, guys? I'm John. And I'm Annalisa. And today, we are going to be doing a patio, outdoor patio remodel hey, for under 200. Yeah, what's up? Ba -ba -bean, ba -ba -bean, ba -bean. Bean, you got to be in here. You've got consistency issues. Okay. So today, we are going to be redoing Annalisa's uh, outdoor patio mm -hmm. on a 200, $150 to a $200 budget. Yeah. It's a courtyard space yes. in Silver Lake. Yes. It is really pretty already. It has some bench seating. It has some... It's really pretty already. It has some bench seating and it has uh, some plants growing there. Yeah. And it already has furniture. Yeah, it has like a... It has a bench, a couple plants, but it's been neglected for quite some time. And I feel like this is the year to just like freshen things up, whatever. Up. Yeah, because I want to sit there. Like I want to be able to use it, but it just haven't happened. And I haven't had... I mean, Eugene, my husband is like... He says he wants to, but he doesn't really. So it's like, I need someone to like actually help out and be excited about it, as excited as I would be. And I am excited. Yes. Um, but basically some of the issues are sunlight. Mm -hmm. So we have an issue here in Southern California where the sun is so strong in the summer that even a lot of plants that are full sun or marked as full sun tend to burn. Um, so we've seen a lot of shifts in the past couple like five years of it getting hotter and like burning much quicker than it used to but um I have switched my yard pretty much all the way over to succulents and the great mm. thing about that is now that they're established yeah Annalise is going to pop outside and going to pick through um some succulents and figure out what she wants and yeah. we can just stick them into pots or into the ground over at her house and they yes. will eventually take off um, some things to note with that, if you grab succulents off of another plant, if you can get a bit of the root, you will be saving yourself like a year's worth of growing time. Um, just because establishing those roots can be really finicky and mm -hmm. tedious. Um, and I feel like I got some, I'm like, the, the plants I'm like, that I'm going to plant, like, they're good too because they don't get damaged by the sun. And like yeah. the ones that I have right now, like I tried so many plants, you guys, and they just all die. They literally all die and it's hard to in pots. But I feel like succulents are just like resistant to pot too. Yeah. You can put them in pots. Succulents basically will go into like a stasis if you don't water them. And it takes a really, really long time for them to die from drying out. Yeah. It takes them like 48 hours to die from overwatering. Mm -hmm. So it's really backwards from what you're used to with, you know, probably gardening back in Sweden or yeah. even for me on the East Coast. It's like you've got to water like constantly. Yeah. Whereas here you risk killing the plant from overwatering. So um, in its initial like years, I think watering succulents pretty regularly is OK if it's not indoors. Yeah. If it's outside and it's in the heat and the water's evaporating a lot, I think you're OK. But when you get into bringing those plants inside, I'm like, treat it like a cactus. Yeah, pretty yeah, pretty sure we have some good ones though that we can put in. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna go outside, pick some clippings out of the garden and kind of figure out what we're gonna do with that. We're yeah. gonna take you guys with us vintage shopping and used sale shopping. Um, and we'll sh I'll show you how we're doing um, some pillows yeah. and soft goods. We'll be updating the benches that yes. are there. Repainting some stuff. Yeah. And yeah. we'll do all that on site and bring the camera there. And then uh, then we'll have like a big reveal. Yeah. So Yay. here we go. Yay. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the backyard just kind of gandering around. And I'm taking Annalisa and Bean through some of the garden. My neighbor just gave us a bunch of clippings. We have a bunch of stuff coming up that Devin and I planted. Um, I'm training Ivy over here. The guy didn't take the ladder. I just said... Don't forget your ladder and stuff. Dude. 
But you are saying you kind of want to go with a rosette shape, right? Yes. So. So the ones I feel like I picked out are like more. Got a little basketball. Like I want more of these guys. Like these are really pretty. Just stack them in, and like they will look like a giant flower all together. I feel like. I'll show you them at my neighbor's house too because she's the one that gave them to me. Mm -hmm. It's around the corner. I'll walk you over there um, and show you what, how they mature because yeah. they're really... When I saw hers, I saw hers and I was like, I want my garden to look exactly like that. Mm -hmm. She just has like a very keen eye for how things go and she's grown hers all from clippings as well. Cool. Um, my neighbor gave us all these succulents. There's obviously the Echeveria, the different versions, the, like the shrub versions of the bigger rosettes. Um, but you know, they all turn into like multi-head. Some of them turn into trees. Um, and then there's the ones that stay kind of like ground cover, like these. And these I feel like come in a lot more colors. Um, and then you're taking agave, yeah. you're taking a variegated agave, and you're taking a blue agave. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it yeah. for now. We can go check other stuff out and see. This is our little Coachella cactus. She's just gotten back from the festival. So our milkweed has dropped some seeds and these seedlings have come up and we're gonna take a couple of them to Annalise's as well, just to get the butterflies and the bees to come popping in. The other thing we can do is we can go into this lavender and any seed heads or any blossoms that are starting to brown, you cut back about five inches, rubber band them together back here and stick them in a paper bag. The seeds will then drop out into the paper bag as it dries up. The rosemary, how big was it? Oh, the rosemary was a seed. What? I grew that from seed. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. How long did that take? Uh, that one's three years old. Oh, which is all like now I'm gonna plant my um my tomatoes. And like there's a whole thing. <laughs> this is what's left in my grapefruit tree. It's not doing very well. I don't know what happened. Mickey Hargate has some explaining to do. Probably because grapefruit tastes like shit. That is freaky that you don't like grapefruit. <laughs> You're not allowed to like oranges and limes and lemons I if you don't like grapefruit. And limes and lemons. Kumquat? Love kumquats. <laughs> Wait, what is this guy? What is this one he That's orange. That's orange? Mm hmm But he's doing good. Why is he not doing good? He had fruit this year, but that was the one that the homeless guy stole. Which I mean, <laughs> that I was like, that's fine. If a homeless person st steals like produce for me. I'm like, well, that's the circle of life. <laughs> you have to tell me the story. <laughs> so at this point, Annalise and I have wound up with a large collection of succulents and plants for her garden. Um, probably more than we actually need, but might as well take as much free stuff as we can. So at this point, it's time to head over to her house and inventory what she has as far as containers and plants. But first, let's have a moment with Bean. Look at that beautiful face. Look at that precious poodle. Snoony. Snoony. So just full disclosure, we're not starting off with nothing. We're starting off, and now that I've inventoried Annalisa and Eugene's garden materials, there's a lot to work with here. But the idea is seating along this way seating here and some kind of grill. The grill probably won't be part of the $200 budget unless I can find one for free. Um, just because I think those people tend to be very particular about. I had posed the idea of continuing this wall here with a live wall, but um, they opted out of that. They think that they don't need the privacy on this patio because it doesn't get enough foot traffic. So. There's an old AC that is not in use anymore. I don't know if we can remove it. We'd have to talk to the landlord. It just pops out of the wall, but I don't know if he'd be willing to seal up the wall or what. Um, but this is their functioning silent AC and uh, that we'll have to work around. So Annalisa and I wasted no time getting our hands dirty and inventorying the space and then taking some of the new succulents that we had 
from my own garden and incorporating them into the containers that she already has. Right off the bat, I immediately thought there were too many containers, but because there were so many natural terracotta ones that that coloring went so well with the apartment building, I thought maybe we would end up consolidating into those over time and working with that color palette. However, um, for right now, since everything is, you know, in cutting form or seedling form, we're going to go ahead and plant as much as we can into the pots to get them rooted and healthy. And then we will reassess the pots and any sort of containers or live wall that we want to do um, once Annalisa and Eugene get back from their trip to Europe. Here's where we are after the day one. We've just kind of like cleaned things up, taken an inventory. This is basically everything Annalisa already had or was from my scraps. And then she purchased the two rosemary. Um, yeah, right now we're just trying to get things to reroute and restructure. This is a hospital bin. This is a old jasmine that we think may come back. There's a tinier jasmine in there and there's a couple of clippings of succulents. Other things we did to cheat the system was to break apart rosettes and make them as a ground cover. They won't stay that way, but for, you know, a couple of years, they're still gonna be low lying. The mini jades did the same thing where they were red. And this is milkweed for the monarch butterflies. So that will recreate itself. The agaves are pretty fast growing, so they will pop up. Here's a lavender seed of three different types of lavender. And then we've got other plants that we thought would be great as focal points or um, really eye-catching on their own. So we decided just to give them the space to grow bigger. Like those will probably just stay like that forever, you know? Like yeah. Like the single ones. So here's the basic idea of the patio outside their home. And what I want to do is create a lot of bench seating that doubles as storage. So I'm going to create these plywood boxes that essentially add tons and tons of cubic foot storage for them on the outside of the home. On the left you have bench seating with a lid open top and on the right you have planters. And along the wall uh, the wall will be structured with chicken wire or fishing line or something so that we can create a grid to get plants to grow along the wall which is blocking them from a car parking spot. Then we're going to plant the planters with tomatoes and other produces that uh, Annalisa and Eugene approved of and some vines to go up on the wall. That's going to create the live wall that I really wanted to do on the outside of the patio but they've kiboshed that idea so I'm going to try and make this feel as cozy and uh, as room-like as possible. Also above there's going to be a sun sail attached to the uh, second story of the building, which will give them a little bit more shade during the day. After all the planting is done, we're gonna try and find soft cushions that can be stored within the benches when they're not being used and brought out for entertaining. We're also gonna take a terracotta pot and use it as a base for a marble table. Uh, that will exist as a coffee table for anyone who is sitting there reading or laying down. Overall, I want this to feel really cozy. I want it to serve some purpose for entertaining, but I also want it to provide a little bit of food uh, for Eugene and Annalisa. I want it to be fun. I'll add string lights. Um, but I'm just trying to cool down the color palette and bring everything in together um, into a little outdoor room that they can enjoy on their own or have a little party and have friends over. For now, it's time that I get measurements and get hitting on the uh, plywood to make the boxes with Annalisa and then start covering them in feather finish and sealing them. So I'll put uh, that video up pretty soon and uh, we'll take you guys through the process episode by episode. Uh, as we redo this garden. Do we do two player? Now we're hard at work designing the patio. <laughs> two player.
Are you too pink? The devils are dangerous. The hornets? Yeah. Oh no. Honestly. And you can grab that by the way. Then you get me. You started me falling. <laughs> And this guy's chasing me up the ropes. You'll be just fine. Oh. You'll be just fine, John. Look okay, at you. I just really feel unsupported. <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da. Can't hit him, I guess. No, no, no. They, they just start flying around, so you have to jump over him. Ah! Oh. You made it. Yeah, turn that motherfucker out.